Hey, what's up out there, family and friends? It's your boy, the motivational teacher to the masses, coming to you live with another edition of Motivational Monday. Go ahead and go ahead and hit your likes. Go ahead and let grandmama share, like, comment. Let grandmama and them know that the motivational teacher to the masses has just gone live. Let your friends know if you're looking for your life to be better. And you want today to be better than yesterday. And I want tomorrow to be better to than today. Go ahead and hit your people up and let them know that the motivational teacher to the masses is going live tonight. And he is going to break bread for the ages. And first of all, I want to tell a lot of you out there, thank you. Uh, my last three motivational Mondays have, have gone over 7,000, over 8,000 views. So number one, thank you all for becoming a part of the movement and not just sitting on the sidelines and watching. No more Monday morning quarterbacks, but you're getting in the game. And so my my gratitude belongs to you all. So thank you for that. And tonight, I come to you to talk about the mamba mentality. The mamba mentality. Uh, Sunday, I was in a plane flying Delta on my way to Las Vegas. And I got on the plane with nothing on my mind. I got on the plane. I took a nap, watched some movies. And I got off the plane. What's up, Raymond? Hey, Elkie. I got off the plane. And the first thing I saw was that Kobe Bryant, um, by far my son's and my best basketball player, just overall attitude in life, had uh, passed away. He had hit a, uh, flew into a mountain in his helicopter. And it's been all on the news. And all of you all have seen it. I've met Kobe once in my life. Thank you all for liking and sharing. Let's see, can we run this up to uh, 40, 40, 40 eyes again? And it takes all of us to do that. So I um, heard the news and saw that Kobe had passed away, man. And I, and I landed in Las Vegas. And the only thing I could do was go to my room and take a nap. That's the most I could do. Is go to my room and take a nap because... The world had, had lost a warrior. Not just a warrior for basketball, but a warrior for good. And that loss is truly going to be felt. And so I felt the need to come on tonight to talk about the mumble mentality. And, and it, it gives me great joy to have this platform and to have these eyes watching me to talk about something um, that, 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 that changes lives. And, and there are a lot of lessons that we can learn from Kobe's life. A lot of lessons we can learn from, from Kobe's life. But I don't want to go through each one of the Kobe's lessons. I want to talk about what we can take away and implement in our lives. So on Sunday night, it, it was hard for us. My wife had to pull over because she was uh, driving when she got the news. She had to pull over beside the road because it's that impactful. My family and I, we listened to the mumble mentality uh, twice a week probably. And this was even before COVID passed away. So it hit us strong. It hit us, it hit us strong. But by Wednesday, after all, now this is where we're going to get into this motivational Monday. And this is where we're going to start breaking bread. By Wednesday, uh, you know, we prayed for uh, his wife and his other kids. We did all those things. And by Wednesday, I came to the conclusion that Kobe fulfilled the vision for his life. Now, was Kobe like, I don't know, but people are mourning Kobe worldwide. Kobe has such an impact on people. Feel me on this now. I'm going somewhere. I am going somewhere with this. Kobe has such an impact on people. And that when I saw the tributes all around the world to the black mom, I was like, wow, that guy, that guy died empty. He died empty. Like he, he gave himself away to people outside of his current natural circle. He died empty. My question is to us, how many of us, hey, what's up, Coach T? What's up, Donnell? I'm breaking bread right now. I'm talking about my boy Bean, the Black Mamba. So right, right now, there are life lessons that we can take from his life. All right, I'm about to get into this thing in a minute. I see a lot of people chiming again, hopping in here. I don't want to leave anybody, so you better let them know he's about to go in and the bread, the bread breaking is about to commence. So by Wednesday, I said, man, Kobe lived a full life. But my question to us is, y'all feel me on this. My question to us is, if, if we died today, if we died today, 
would somebody outside our immediate family recognize the impact that we had on them? If we died today, I'm not saying we need a parade around the world or we need 24 seconds of silence around the world. But what I am saying, will the world know you were gone if you passed away today? Listen to your boy now. I'm about to break bread. And see, the mumble mentality is all about becoming the better versions of oneself. And see, most of us, and you all hear me talk about this all the time, personal growth, personal development, COVID. I mean, I mean listen, to get where we want to go out of life, to be memorialized. Oh, boy, I'm about to break bread. To be more memorialized the way God intended us to do, the version of who you are now cannot witness that memorialization, the version of who you are now, it, it does not deserve the going away party that the version of which he created you to do. And see, we got to get to the point where we stop crying when people leave. We got to start crying when people are living and they're merely existing and not living. Kobe lived his life. Thank you, Donnell. Y'all, please share, like, and host, host watch parties for me. We're going to run this motivational up because this is... This is going to be life changing. I, I I don't like dealing with death on my motivational Mondays because I like to I like to breathe life into people. However, death is a reality of all of us that are listening to looking at me, and so we need to recognize that no man nor the day nor the time we don't. But what we do know is what we do know is that we were we were put on earth for a specific purpose. My question to you is. My question to you is, what? why are you here? What What? What holes or, or where do your hands fit perfectly into this earth? We have to change our mentality as it really, boy, I'm about to break bread. I am about to break bread. We have to change our mentality as it relates to living and dying. We're not worried about Kobe went to heaven. Kobe had his impact. But the question is, how many of us are merely existing and not living? I remember Les Brown saying some of us die at 21 and they wait to 65 to have our funeral, meaning that we give up on life. There are no more goals. There are no more dreams. There are no more ambitions. There are no more. There, there, there's nothing. There's no more vision. And Keller said the worst thing is to have sight with no vision. Most of us, we have a lot of, we, we, we have sight, but no vision. Where are we taking our lives? Where are we going? Let's not mourn over the loss of Kobe Bryant because he, 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 he fulfilled his purpose. Now we pray for the kids, we pray for the wife, but Kobe fulfilled his purpose. What are we going to do about ours? What are we going to do about ours? Kobe died doing what dads do. Kobe died doing what dad's doing. I feel bad for Gigi and all the families, but he died doing what dad, he, when he was found, he was found doing what dads do. My question is to you, and I'm about to break bread right now. What is it that you're supposed to be doing right now? What is it that you're supposed, what is it you're supposed to be walking out right now? My boy Bean, I call him, I call him his daddy named Jelly Bean Bryant. Sometimes I call, call Kobe Bean because, you know, it chip off the old block. Now, when I think about Kobe, Kobe got a bad rap when he was playing in the NBA. And here's a principle coming behind this. You better let your folk know the motivational teacher's here. And he's about to break the first principle. He's about to give the first principle. Kobe got a bad rap while in the NBA. He did. He did. Kobe held everybody around him accountable. Coaches, teammates, that's why him and Shaq can get along. Because Kobe demanded more out of Shaq than Shaq demanded for himself. Kobe got a bad rap because Kobe was so ingrained in what he was doing at that moment that he neglected whatever was on the outside and the periphery. I'm not saying neglect what's in the periphery, but I am saying that principle number one, principle number one, we must focus on the wildly important goal. Yeah. Focus on the wildly important goal. And the mumble mentality, I remember Kobe saying, like, he never went on vacations with other basketball players. He said, I don't know when I might have to face that guy in the finals, and I don't need that guy, his family, on my mind when we see each other in the finals because I'm only focused on winning championships. 
He said, I'll build relationships when I'm done playing basketball. I'll build relationships with people outside of my team. But right now, I'm focused on winning championships. My question to you is, my question to you is, what are you focused? What are you single eyed, single scope? What are you single eyed? What's your focus? Whatever we focus on, it grows. What are you focused on right now? So much so that you can block out the noise. Yep, I'm about to break bread. You can block out the haters. Yep, I'm about to break bread. That I'm so focused on my goals and I'm so focused on my dreams that I have no time to be dibbling, dabbling in love and hip hop. I have no time to be dibbling, dabbling in music that doesn't support my vision. See, vision, I'm about to break bread up in here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, let your folk know that he is here and he's about to break bread. Vision, listen to your boy. Vision gives your life clarity. Oh my goodness, I just broke bread. Kobe understood that at an early age. His first year in the league, he said, man, I want to be better than Mike. Listen to me, Michael Jordan. You don't make those comments, number one, unless you're single eye focused. And then here's the second principle. Here's the second principle. And number two, you will never be outworked. Man, I just broke bread. Number one, you got to be single-eyed on one vision, one purpose. I'm telling you, see, for me, I'm going to break bread with y'all. I know I'm talking about Kobe. But for me, my goal is the mumble mentality. My goal is to be the better version of myself. See, what I do understand about becoming the better version of myself, if I become a better version of me, I automatically become a better version of a father. Yeah, I'm breaking bread. I automatically become a better version of, 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 of a husband. If I become the better version of me, I automatically become a better version a better version of an employee. Uh, to become a better version of me, I also become a better version of a business owner. Why? Because one rising tide lifts all the ships. If my lifestyle is one of personal growth, we can't, and Kobe understood this better than most, we can't go through life. We have to grow through life. And many of us don't want to take the bumps and the bruises in order to get through the garbage and to get through the hassle and to get through the fight in order to get to the ultimate, the ultimate side of what God has called us to. These things don't come without a fight. Somebody need to tweet that. If you're going to walk in the purpose of God in your life, these things don't come without a fight. Some of us believe that, that, that it's supposed to be easy. If it was so easy, then we would not have a world full of average people. People with the mumble mentality understands that, number one, I got to be single eyed. I'm breaking bread. Vision gives your life clarity. Thank you, mom. Yep, it does. Number two, never be outworked. Kobe said, listen to what I'm about to tell you. See, some of us right now, I'm about, this is why I am the motivational teacher. I separate the, the, the bone from the marrow. This is why I break bread. Kobe said when he first came into the league that I want to be better than Michael Jordan. You don't make that comment unless you know there's something special on the inside of you. And then you make, and then when once you know that there's something on the inside of you, you're willing to work after hours. I remember Jay Williams telling a story about how Kobe, he came in the gym before the game. Kobe was working out. He worked out an hour and a half. Kobe was still working out. What's up, Dexter? Kobe was still working out even after Jay Will left. And Jay Will asked Kobe, Kobe dropped him off for 40. Jay Will asked Kobe after the game, Kobe, why you work out so hard before the game and come out there and drop off like that? He said, Kobe said it was simple. I want to let you know that you were never going to outwork me. I wasn't going to leave this court until, uh, until the game was over if you had a state. He said, you would have never outworked me. And my question, uh -oh, my question to some of us out there, are we willing to outwork the next person. Yep. Yep. Are we willing to be the best employee at our job? Yep. Yep. Are we willing or are, are we willing to uh, uh this is where people start hanging up. This is where people start hanging up uh, putting their um start getting off the uh, off the uh Facebook live when I say this. Are you willing to do more work than what you're paid? <laughs> 
Are you willing to do more work than what you pay? It's not easy, but doable when you have 100% focus, when you're lazing in. So true, Sarah. Sarah. So good. Never be outworked. Hey, what's up, Brandon? We got to fight for it. I, I, I'll give y'all another one. I just, I we, like I just said, we had a large convention in Las Vegas. And we went out there in Las Vegas. And at the end, on Fridays, they give a, a bunch of awards. And I just got one of, the, one, of the, one of the best awards that my company has to offer called a vision award. And I got it for the architect, pioneer just about having vision, being able to go further than, than what the company gives you. And, and, and you don't hear me talk a lot about my awards and my accolades because I don't really get caught up in that, those kind of things. But this one, I'm really proud of it. I'm really proud of it because I stretched myself in 2019. I stretched myself in 2019 and it wasn't about money. It wasn't about status. It wasn't about things, but it was about me becoming a better version of who I am. And I, and I tried things outside of my comfort zone. I volunteered for tasks that I knew at this time I wasn't qualified for. Why? Because it's the growth mindset in me. And because of that growth mindset, I was recognized by my boss's boss and my peers as being Number one, you know, the Vision Award winner. They only give away one. Thank you, Donnell. And, and, and I don't talk about that kind of stuff a lot because I don't think that those things are important. But what is important is whether they give me a Vision Award or whether they give me not give me a Vision Award, it doesn't change my grind. My grind, I work as unto the Lord. My grind is my grind. It doesn't matter if I if I get a raise at the end of the year. It doesn't matter if they reduce my salary by 10%. My grind is my grind because I understand that my grind is connected to my next phase of life. Somebody better feel me out there. Some of us right now already complaining that we don't feel valued where we are. It's okay. Your grind is your grind and it's connected to your next level of life. Don't worry about that. Right now, my boss don't appreciate me. It's not about your boss appreciate you, appreciating you. It's about God watching you be faithful. Man, I just broke bread. Sometime in unfavorable circumstances, we have to remain faithful. We have to remain single-eyed, and I'm not willing to back down from what God gave me. Why? Because I know this is what he's called me to do, and I'm about to break bread for some of y'all looking at me. Yeah, I am. If your job is not connected to your purpose, now let me rephrase this. Let me rephrase this. Let me rephrase this. Our, our jobs should be connected to our life's work. The reason why I can give more on my job, because I know coaching, I know developing people, I know personal growth. I know training is what is, is, is connected to my overall vision and purpose in life. I know that. So when I go to my, my 8 to 5, I can go at 6.30 and stay to 9 because I know it, it's, it, it's attached to what God has gave me. And I know by me developing, yep, I'm breaking bread. Thank you. I know by me developing my gifts, my kids automatically benefit. I'm breaking bread right now. My wife automatically benefits because the better coach I become, I become a better coach for my kids. I become a better a better partner for my spouse, for my wife. Man, I'm breaking bread up in here tonight. And sometimes it's not easy because not all the time do you get the vision award. I appreciate I did, but not all the time. People not going to recognize you for what you do above and beyond most of the time. Hey, you're, 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 boy, I'm about to tell you something right here. The people that work to your right and to your left going to hate on you. Oh, why? You think you all of that? You think you're doing more than everybody else? This, this ain't your business. Why are you working like this and this ain't your business? Why are you doing this for this for this man or that one man or, or that black man or that white man? Why, why, why are you going out your way now? You ain't been doing all that. Why? Because I'm single eye on my purpose and understand that my purpose is connected to what I do for eight hours a day. Somebody better feel your boy out there. Somebody better feel your boy out there. Got some people chiming into this conversation. The work we do defines us. No doubt, Sarah. Got Brandon. That was, that was on time right there. Good word. I see you gagging. Yep. We're going to bring it tonight. We're going to bring it tonight. And we're just talking about the mumble mentality. We're talking, and I didn't prepare for this tonight. I didn't do some study. I wanted to get on here and just speak from my heart about what I know 
from the mumble. I just want to get on here and talk to you all about the lessons that I've learned from the mumble. And you better believe that we are all in a culmination, I'm about to break bread, of, of the people that we allow to influence our life. <laughs> I just broke bread right there. You got, I just broke bread. I, I was just on another, on another podcast and it was talking about having healthy thoughts and, and on, on, on um, Sarah's podcast and talking about healthy thoughts and having a healthy mentality. And the way to do that is to adopt a life of personal development. The version of who you are today, this is the mama mentality. The version of who you are today cannot manifest the complete and total will of God for your life. It cannot. I find it strange. I find it strange that, 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 that most of us, a lot of us, we lose ambition after we've been told no two or three times. But we have to be able to go from no to no without the loss of enthusiasm. We got to be able to go hard from thought to thought without the loss of enthusiasm. Why? Because this, let me, let me back up. This is why I'm a motivational teacher. This can only happen. This can only happen when there's a level of belief on the inside of you that supersedes what everything looks like on the outside and what people may say or believe about you. There has to be a seed on the inside. I'm breaking bread right now. There has to be a seed on the inside that believes that greater is calling you. There has to be a seed on the inside. Why? How can Kobe say, I'm going to be better than Mike at 18? Yep, I'm breaking bread right now. Because he understood, even, even at that moment, he said he grew up. In the house, his mom and his dad, he said the one thing they did that he cherished is that they fostered a mindset of curiosity. They said, son, anything can be done. Yep, you could do anything, but you will do the thing that you're willing to work for. I'm breaking bread right now. They fostered an environment of curiosity. They just didn't blindly say you could do anything. You could do, you could do all things. You could do whatever you want out there. And so many of us have that. We got that mentality. I could do whatever out there. No, 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 we can't do whatever out there. We can do the thing we're willing to work to do. I just broke Kobe Jelly Bean Bryant bread right there. He was willing, and, and they talk, and Kobe talked about, the guy asked Kobe, and this is going to be for some of you all out there because some of y'all got so many haters out there in your life. You got so many people that you tied to at the hip. This is going to help you. And the interviewer asked Kobe, said, Kobe, when, when you were playing basketball, right after you finished, you were so single, you were so focused on basketball. He said, did relationships suffer around you? Did, and, I, and, I, and I remind myself about this every day. Anybody that wants to be great better write this note down. They better write this down. Kobe said, yes, relationships suffer. All right, Robert. Kobe said, yes, relationships suffer. That's what he said. He said, but the people that were meant to be in your life were the people that if you miss talking to them for three or four months, you pick back up where you left off. There's never a guilt trip about you not being there. There's never a guilt trip about where you've been and what you've been doing. There's not a guilt trip about you weren't there for me. There's not a guilt trip about what you've been doing with your time. No, they accept you for who you are and they say, okay, when we pick up well, we left off. Why? Because I am in your corner and understand that God gave you a gift and you got to materialize that gift. And truth be told, yep, the people and other people on the other side of Kobe life should have been doing the same thing. I'm breaking bread right now. Uh, Sarah chiming in this conversation. I believe we all have that seed. Some of us pay attention to it and other of us, uh, of us ignore it. You just broke bread, Sarah. You just broke bread. And I'm going to take it one step further. I'm going to say that the majority of us ignore it. The majority of us ignore that seed. Why? Because like Kobe said, it's going to cost you relationships in order to mature that seed. Everything that the acorn is, everything that the oak tree is, is tied into that very small acorn. Everything that the oak tree is, is tied into that very small acorn. That acorn need, need nothing but to be put in the ground in order to become an oak tree. I just broke bread. But going in that ground is so hard 
because that because that acorn has to be broken. Yep, it has to be broken. Yep, and most of us as adults, most of us as adults, we find being uncomfortable as a bad. Well, that must not be what God want me to do because right now it's uncomfortable. Well, this must not be what God want me to do because it's it's difficult. Well, this must not be what I'm supposed to do because I didn't get the loan from the bank. Well, this is not what it's supposed to do because I went out of bed. Well, this is not what I'm supposed to do. No, no. Growth is always uncomfortable. Faith begins at the end of our comfort zone. There's no way we can walk in faith if we live just right here in our comfort zone. It takes no faith to live in your comfort zone. It only requires faith. My boy Martin Luther King said, faith is taking the first step when you don't see the whole staircase. My question to you is, who's willing to make the comment that I, I could be better than Michael Jordan at 18? And it ain't the point that you, you that you be better than Michael Jordan. It's the fact that you got the belief system that you would say that out loud. Even if you come up number two, number three, you're one of the greatest to ever play the game. I just broke bread. I just broke bread. I could turn this dog on. Facebook live off right now and you ought to walk away hitting yourself in the chest telling yourself what you can truly be yep 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 you should walk away telling yourself the impact that you can have on people's lives see but this stuff just doesn't I told you about ah, four motivational Mondays ago it's about being Kobe Bryant was being he had worked that when Co now some of you all gonna find this, uh, 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 not gonna believe it, but it's true. When Kobe Bryant was eleven, Co <laughs> Sarah, you, Sarah, how you funny? <laughs> when Kobe Bryant was eleven, check check me out, y'all. When Kobe Bryant was eleven, he played in a very prominent basketball league in Philadelphia. His dad played in the league and was MVP of that league. His uncle played in that league and was MVP of that league. Kobe played in that league when he was 11 and did not score a basket in the whole league. He's played uh, 14 games and did not get a layup or a free throw. He scored no point. And Kobe said, boy, I'm getting chill bumps all over my body right now. I'm getting chill bumps all over my body right now. And Kobe said, some of y'all don't like adversity. I'm about to change your mind on adversity. Adversity is a good thing. It was good that I was afflicted. Y'all know my boy said that. Y'all don't like adversity out there. But let me tell you what Kobe said about adversity. That's going to take me to my point number three. Kobe said that was one of the best things that ever happened to him that he did not score in that league. And Kobe said that at that moment, y'all hear the motivational teacher talk about a growth plan. That's when he and his dad sat down and architect a plan for him to be better. And he said, okay, man, I can't go into, I could go into this, but I, I, for the sake of this conversation, I don't want to go into it. Him and his dad devised a plan and said, okay, Kobe, right now you're behind. Yep. Right now you're behind. So if you worked out one time or three or two to three times a week, then these other kids will always stay ahead of you. So in order for you to catch up, Kobe, you need to work out twice a day, Four times a day, that gives you eight workouts. When the other kids are working out only three times, that's how you catch and pass them. So at 11, Kobe scored zero baskets. At 16, Kobe was the best basketball player in all of high school and all of the country. Yep, I'm breaking bread right now. Thank you, Brandon. No growth without a challenge. So he went from being 11, not scoring the baskets, to working out two to three times more than all the other players in the world. So now he became the number one player in high school. How did that happen, Anthony? He met adversity face to face. Yep, he sure did. He saw adversity as an opportunity to grow. My challenge to you is how do you meet adversity? Yeah, yeah. How do you meet adversity? And if, in my, my, one of my favorite poems, If by Rutger Kipling said, you have to be able to meet with triumph and disaster and treat them two imposters just the same. You got to meet with triumph and disaster with the same mindset, with the same mentality. How many of us run when we are hit with the first sign of opposition? How many of us run when we are hit with the first sign of adversity? We tuck our tails and most of us run. Why? Because that's what we saw growing up. Yup. Got some people chiming into this conversation. This, 
that were always working for us a greater good. It's our job to be curious and figure out uh, where we are, what would benefit every situation, even in the worst situation. Thank you for chiming into that conversation, Sarah. And that's right along with what you was talking talking about. Hey, what was the answer again? Um, automatic negative thinking. Automatic negative thinking. Ants. We got to get rid of the ants in our life. The automatic negative thinking. We got to get rid of those. We meet adversity face to face. We got to see it as an opportunity to grow. I don't run from adversity. I don't pray adversity away. I don't, I, I don't, whatever it is. I don't, I'm not scared of it. I, I, hey, you got to meet it face to face. We got to know that the only way, the only way you know you're strong is in the face of adversity. Most of us want, want to claim we're so strong, but we don't know how strong we are without adversity. Adversity is your proving ground. The, the, the strong, the, all right, let me, how can I put this? Yeah, I got it. The most successful people, oftentimes, oh, there's some exceptions, but the majority of the time <laughs> had the most adversity. Stephen Jobs, Elon Musk, Tyler Perry, Steve Harvey, Oprah Winfrey was abused, sexually abused, grew up in Mississippi. Oftentimes, the people with the greatest success had the, had the most the most adversity. And that's why when I see a successful person, my first question is, what's your, what's your story? I got to know your story. I know you overcame something to be where you are. What's your, and what's your story? We have to, number one, not number one, number three, you have to master adversity and understand that adversity is not a bad thing. I'll give you even a better story throughout the course of history. History. It was the Martin Luther King. He changed the world with words. It was Martin Luther King who stood at the base of the Selma, at the Selma, uh, the Selma Bridge on the march to Montgomery. It wasn't until Bull Connor decided to spray them, that fire hose and sick dogs on the people at the base of uh, the, the Edmunds Pettus Bridge. At that base, that's was when the whole civil rights movement changed. Why? Because people saw, okay, these people are, are wrongly done. That changed the whole course of the civil rights movement. That adversity. Martin Luther King, and he turned all the people around and said, well, come back and do it another day. Why? Because point proven. Point proven. It is adversity that how we grow. I told you all the story of my dad growing up, my dad being in and out of prison. I told you the story about my mom's, we've been in on and off welfare, and we, we it were eight of us in a three-bedroom trailer. It's adversity that builds character and builds strength. And see, most of us want to run from it, but that's where we, that's where faith is developed. Well, it says just have the faith of a mustard seed. You can move, but you got to develop the faith of a mustard seed. The faith of a mustard seed is not given to you. It has to be what? Developed. We have to have the veracity and the tenacity of a nine-month-year-old baby. I don't care how many times my kids fell down, they were determined to get up and start walking. I don't care. They crawl, they walk, they stumble, bump the chin, bump the jaws, but nonetheless, they got up and tried to keep walking. Sometimes the babes, sometimes we got to return to the example of the babes in order to get to where we're supposed to, supposed to go. I'm breaking bread right now. I don't went all out here in left field talking about the mumble. It was supposed to be real quick. This is supposed to be real quick, but I think Kobe's life has tremendous lessons in it. And the only that I don't think Kobe's death is, death is in vain. It sparked a conversation around the nation about greatness. Yep, about greatness. And and I'm challenging you to challenge yourself. And this life, this life is really not about the day to day hustle. I'm about to break bread. This life is not about day-to-day -day hustle. It's not about your eight to fives. It, th this life is about legacy. It's about legacy. It's about legacy. We, we, it ain't about how much money we make. No, it's not. It's not about how many, what kind of car we drive. It's not about how many bedrooms in our house. It's not about how much money in our checking account. We cannot take any of those things with us. But more so, it's about how many lives that we impact and we change. That's the purpose of life. They asked Kobe, what's your definition of greatness? And I'm about to get off this Motivational Monday. They asked Kobe, Kobe, what's your definition of greatness? 
And Kobe said, my definition of greatness is inspiring the person next to you to be better themselves. That's my definition of greatness. And he went on. He gave a quote from one of his middle school teachers. One of his middle school teachers told him, said, don't rest in the middle. Rest in the end when the job is done. You can't stop in the middle because now your basketball career is over. That means I stop and I go retire and I lay my head on my pillow and I do nothing outside of that besides enjoy my $800 million. No, I, I, I grind it out. And his, he told him, he said, don't rest in the middle, rest in the end. And one lesson that we can take, and I got chill bumps all over my body, one lesson that we can take from Kobe's life, and one thing, legacy that Kobe left is work while it's day. Work while it's day. Because right now, if you're on this side of the dirt, it's day. Because no man know at the time nor the hour. And I'm not telling you to be afraid of death. I embrace death. Everybody, as my mom should tell you, everybody that everybody living got to die at some point. So don't fear death. Fear merely existing while you're alive. That's the true tragedy. The true tragedy is not in leaving this earth because you were never meant to be here forever. The true tragedy is being on earth and not fulfilling the will of God for your life. That is the ultimate true tragedy. Oh, we cry when people could die. We cry, we go to funerals, we do the we do the final pass through and the final glance, and we do all the whine and the shout. We ought not to be shout for the one that's dead. We ought to be the one that, that's dead in the pews. I just broke bread. We should be shout for those people that got books on the inside of them that'll never bring them out. We should be shout for the people that got TV shows written on the inside of them that'll never come out. We should be crying for the person that has a daycare on the inside of them and they never expose the daycare to the world. We need to be crying for that person. Because the person in the, in the casket, they're getting their reward. It's the person in the pews at the funeral that we should be crying for. I just broke bread. I just broke bread. And I know this is some heavy, heavy, heavy stuff tonight. But this is why I am the motivational teacher to the masses. This is why I am him. I, I don't simply tell you about the grind. I don't simply tell you about the fire. I don't simply tell you about the work hard. I don't simply tell you a, a story about somebody else's greatness. It's my job to inspire greatness in you. Yep, that's my job. That's my job. If you're, if, if you're in, not motivated, motivation phase and over the next 20 minutes, if you're inspired to do something different today, right now in this moment, if you're inspired to wake up in the morning and listen to the same motivational Monday over and over and over again until it becomes one, one with you, then I've made a difference. And see, I don't do this for dollars and cents. Feel your boy out there. I don't do this for dollars and cents. Kobe didn't, didn't build the Mamba gym over there where he was flying to for dollars and cents. Believe you me, Kobe doesn't need more dollars and cents. He was doing it for impact. I don't do this for money. Believe you me, my wife and I live a really good lifestyle if I don't ever make another dime with motivational speaking. We may, we have a really good lifestyle without it. It's not about the money. It's about the impact. Until you find a reason for living or until you find a reason for dying, you have never lived. And see, right now, when I'm on these Motivational Mondays, man, you got to understand I've never lived like I have until I'm right here in front of people. If you haven't found that cause in your life, you're merely existing and you got to search within yourself to find out your true purpose and vision in this world. You got to search yourself. You don't need to go to the to climb Everest. You don't need to go and hang glide. You don't need to go ride a motorcycle. You don't need a midlife crisis to find you. You got to search on the end. God hid the treasure in you, the only place, the place where he knew you could find it. I don't need all these exotic things. I don't need all this exotic stuff. I only need to go search what God has already placed on the inside of me in order for me to live out my mamba mentality. Yeah. It's up to us to get there, people. Man, I know I went a little deep, but this is how I roll from the dome when I'm, when I'm a little emotional. Because I think the better version of myself is leaving the notes and sometimes speaking from the heart. My mom will tell you that I have always been a guarded person. I was never one. She ain't ever have to tell me not, about not telling the house business. I wasn't going to ever tell it. She ain't never have to worry about me giving, talking about anything really because I was a really guarded person. And part of my next level and my growth plan, yeah, I'm talking about, yeah, see, see, I'm a player slash coach. 
I have not attained. Part of my part of my development and my growth is to leave the notes. Part of my development and my growth is to not be so put together and say, Aunt, we just gonna flow today. And that's part of my growth and development. And like I have areas of growth and development, you have areas in growth and development. Like we oh, we have not attained. I press toward the mark of the high calling. And I have not reached the high calling. I'm pressing toward the mark. And so are you. So let's continue to press because there's a better, the mama mentality, there's a better version of you awaiting your own personal growth development plan. Hey, I want to thank you all for, for chiming into this conversation. You all have been awesome uh, tonight. We saw up north of 30 eyes. Please like and share and host watch parties for this video. Listen to it every morning to start your day. I know there's other motivational speakers you can listen to that have more of a national platform, but I promise you, they ain't separating the bone from the marrow. And for you all that know what I'm talking about, shoot me with a thumbs up. And if for you all that don't know what I'm talking about when I say separate the bone from the marrow, you better DM me so you can understand what the motivational teacher is talking about. But thank you all for chiming in. Y'all have been amazing. R.I.P. Kobe. We gonna keep the work. We gonna keep the work alive. We gonna keep your words alive because they change lives. And thank you all for chiming in. Until next time, I am challenging you all to wage war on mediocrity. We out.